Hello folks, VM Explorer here and welcome to this blog post or video blog around transitioning from 40 gigabit ethernet to 10 gigabit ethernet. Yes, that's correct. I did say 40 gigabit ethernet. And why would I transition to 10 gigabit ethernet? About three or four years ago, I started working with a technology called InfiniBand. A simple card. This is a Mellanox Connect X3 and it actually gives me 40 gigabits per port. The card costs around oh, 30 to 60 dollars depending on where you get it and you've got to use custom InfiniBand cables. These are relatively thick and they, uh, they generally work pretty well. If you look on my blog you'll actually see a lot of posts around how to work with InfiniBand and make it work good for your home lab. One of those switches I got was this nice IS5022. Okay, I don't recommend buying this switch, but I wanted to show you an example of an InfiniBand switch. It's a decent switch. Now each port will actually give you 40 gigabits per port. Very quick, very efficient, very low latency, but InfiniBand has a lot of drawbacks. There's a lot to learn. If you're used to using Ethernet, you're going to have a few drawbacks there trying to figure it all out. And I did. I put a lot of posts out there. I figured out how to do it with all my virtualization switches. And it, it was a great experience. So read the blog. There's a six-part series around it. But one of the main reasons I'm looking to transition to 10 gigabit Ethernet from 40 gigabit InfiniBand is the cost has started to come down dramatically. So as an example, you can get a nice... LSI 10 gigabit card now for about $20. Uh, two ports of 10 gig, right? Uh, it uses SFP Plus and DAC cables, which are these guys here. Really cheap, inexpensive DAC cables. Uh, this cable was about $5. So the price has come down dramatically over the last three or four years. However, one of the areas that has not come down is the actual switches. One of those switches I have today is actually by Microtik. Wait a tick, Microtik? Never heard of them. And you probably haven't. But let's take a look at this one. This is the 309 series. And it actually gives you eight ports of SFP plus connectivity, which is nice. So let's pull it out. So here's the actual switch. As you can see, nice heat sink on the back. One thing to notice right away, no fans on the device. So it is absolutely 100% quiet. Perfect for a home lab, radiates heat out the back, 12 volt power. Notice the power requirements on it. 12 volt to 57 volt. And it runs on about close to 17 watts, okay? little connection here for looping in the power cord if you want. Let's take a look at the front. As you can see from the front we actually have eight ports, all 10 gig. Okay, We've got a power over Ethernet input port and a console port. What's nice about this switch is it's dual power. Wait a tick. <laughs> there isn't dual power on the back. There's a power input here. Got a nice ground here if I want to ground the device, but I don't see dual input. Well, it actually uses the PoE here. So PoE power in, okay, and power here actually has the device as a dual power supplied unit. So if one or the other fails, the switch stays up. That's a really nice feature. Dual power switch, no fans, super quiet, eight ports of 10 gigabit, in a very small and compact form factor. The price point is probably the best. You can pick these up for less than $250 US. Great price point for eight, eight gigabit, or eight, eight ports to 10 gigabit. Let's look what else comes in the box. We've got our standard ears and bolts, no big surprise there. And then the extension mount for the switch. This basically hangs off the side of the switch. Switch goes right here. And you can mount it in your rack. So rack mount, 
years. And then the actual power supply for the unit. Super small, nice little power supply coming in at 0.8 amps. Output is, sorry, that's sorry, input is 0.8 amps. Output is 24 volts at 1.2 amps. So very low power, zero noise, great price point. It's pretty hard to beat. Now they also have this in a four port module. Uh, this is layer three, so it can do router or switch. You just boot it up in which, which mode you want, whether you want to use it as a switch or a router. You can do both, it's kind of nice. The four port model, nice compact, again, no fan. And it uh, is just basically a four port 10 gig switch with SFP plus. So really good options there. They got a really good value going. And when we look at the price difference between these two, the left and the right, the InfiniBand versus this, they are almost on par. It depends on how cheap you can get your InfiniBand switch set up. I got a 24 port, correction, 36 port, each port 40 gigabit a piece. You're not seeing it here in the video, but I was able to get that for $149, which is a great value. That's about a two, three thousand dollar switch. It works like a dream, works great, but there's a lot to do with InfiniBand. Very complicated if you're not used to it. Not complicated if you're used to doing IP and Ethernet, and it's a really good deal going this way versus trying to get InfiniBand into your home lab. So next steps are we'll get this switch set up. I'll create a new blog about actually creating custom ISOs for this card, hooking up the DAC cables, getting it all interfacing with this, and then getting this set up, and then we should be good to go. Thank you so much for your time today, and do have a great day.